Hi everybody, um, welcome to day nine of this series uh, to educate all about how to boost your immune system and how to regain your confidence to return to the outside world after lockdown. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a subject that has been in the news um, with regard to the types of people who seem more vulnerable to uh, the COVID-19. And uh, often or not, they're people with uh, multiple underlying health issues. And there has been report of people, particularly with me metabolic diseases, such as type two diabetes and heart disease, etc., having much more propensity to uh, more vulnerability to uh, getting the COVID-19. And also not only that, but of having more of a, um, a severe response in their bodies to this virus. You know, some people have a very mild response, some people don't uh, have symptoms at all and other people really struggle uh, with uh, the virus and, and, and don't really have the, the, the physical energy or the, uh, the minerals, the nutrients uh, necessary to uh, have a robust immune response and get over it. So today, with that in mind, I felt uh, it important to tackle this as a subject on its own because actually metabolic diseases are lifestyle diseases. Um, often or not, people think that uh, disease just happens to us, it's genetic, uh, you know, in my family, I'm prone to this or that. I get that an awful lot, but actually 95% of all chronic disease is actually lifestyle uh, driven and only about five to seven percent of any uh, of the chronic diseases are actually genetic and even within that uh, there are uh, lifestyle environmental factors that we can put into place uh, that can supersede our genes, switch off our, our genetic materials that might cause um, us problems. So um, it's really great to know that, I think, because it means that we can do an awful lot with our lifestyle to um, prevent these chronic diseases and also to reverse uh, some, of, some of the, the diseases. And type 2 diabetes is one of those uh, ones that uh, is a lifestyle um, disease that can be reversed. Now, if you do have type 2 diabetes, if you're going to embark on any changes, then you need to work with your doctor and a, a professional um, health provider. In my, in my opinion, it's really important uh, to do these things um, safely with professionals to support you along the way. Now, if you don't have that, or if you're pre-diabetic, or if you want to just uh, lose a little bit of weight, um, what happens when we're under stress is that we uh, stop um, burning fat and we start storing it. And so with these metabolic uh, problems, um, we have a, a situation where we've, we're storing energy, as it were, to fan the flames of the inflammation that is in the body. So these are inflammatory diseases. And uh, what we need to do through our lifestyle is to uh, um, calm down the inflammation through uh, diet and also through the exercise we, we use. And it's not just about food and exercise, it's about how, when, what, where. And I've alluded to an awful lot of this already uh, in general sense uh, throughout the series, so do have a recap on those, um, those uh, videos. But I'll just explain to you here today um, the rough uh, uh, measures that you, you need. Um, if you want um, personal help, of course, um, please do get in touch and we can uh, do it on a professional basis so that you're very well supported. So what with uh, metabolic diseases, with type 2 diabetes, um, it's a dysregulation of uh, the uh, insulin uh, hormone. And insulin is something that helps to transport sugars into the cell. 
And when there's too much food coming in too often um, and too much sugars coming in, then these insulin uh, receptors that take the glucose into the cell, they become uh, overloaded as it were. And it's a little bit like a lock and a key situation where um, you know, the key suddenly doesn't fit the lock, the lock is closed and it won't allow um, that, uh, that glucose to go into the cell. So then the insulin is circulating around the bloodstream and uh, causes all sorts of havoc um, and blood sugar goes all over the place and we have to put it, the, the glucose somewhere that can't go into the cell so we store it. So then you find that you get more um, adipose tissues around the middle mainly uh, around your visceral cells so you end up with fatty liver that sort of thing um, all sorts of problems around digestion and and, and weight gain will will occur and um, with with that um, uh, we have a lack of energy, we have all, all sorts of other symptoms, our blood pressure might rise, um, lots and lots of other types of uh, illnesses will, will come as a consequence of that. Now, we've heard uh, over the years lots of different information about what we should and shouldn't eat for our weight. And, um, and you know, calorie counting has been a long held belief and, and it still is, is uh, a lot of these weight loss programs uh, are all about calorie counting. But unfortunately in the brain and the body, we don't like being told we can't do something. And so, it actually drives appetite and we have these cravings uh, that are very difficult to work with and they don't work. Um, it's a stress and it's creating an unhealthy relationship with our food. Our food should be very delicious and, and, and we should be allowed and able to enjoy the nourishment of every meal. You know, it's, it's, that's how food should be. So um, the important thing with, uh, with food is not to have too many meals. Um, what happens when we've got a blood sugar imbalance is that we fight, feel this, this, this rise and dip of our blood sugar so that the brain says, please give me some more food, and we reach for snacks, we reach for the things that will give us an instant hit. The other thing the body does is it very much, very quickly burns and, and breaks down muscle in order to give a very quick instant um, glucose uh, rush into the body to, to keep that, that blood sugar balance. And so we find that we, we can lose water and we can lose muscle if we start to, to lose weight in, the, in, a, in a way that isn't fat burning. And, and often this is what we see. And then you lose all your energy. You've got you know, not the wherewithal to, to, be, to be well and, and your immune system is compromised as well. So um, the important thing is to have the right sorts of foods and to have a less meal frequency. That's not to say you shouldn't, uh, you should fast for a long, long time, but let's say if you have three meals a day, that is the, that is the maximum really one should have during the day in terms of meals and spread it out so that your digestive system can rest and repair itself in between and that then the hydration can come in between the meals. And so, Sometimes you might find that you can even have two meals a day, maybe on one or two days a week. And for a lot of people that might sound really like, oh no, there's no way I could do that. But you can train your blood sugar to cope with that over time. And over just a few weeks, you can really transform yourself from eating little and often, which is how we were used to be told, uh, to eating these two or three meals a day and exercising, in between exercising before you eat, uh, so on an empty empty tank, as it were, that is the ideal way to repair these insulin receptors. So we we regain sensitivity to the insulin, so that we can uh, absorb that glucose into the cell and and trigger that fat burning mechanism. And that is what you want. You want to keep, maintain your hydration, maintain your, your uh, muscle mass, 
but lose weight through losing fat. Um, and there are great body composition scales that you can buy that uh, um, uh, weight scales that will actually show you all these different measures, these body uh, measures. And so you can make sure that you're having healthy weight loss. And it, it shouldn't be fast. You should do it over, over weeks or months, depending on how much weight you need to lose. So it's about stabilizing your blood sugar, keeping the insulin levels low, making sure you've got really decent, good quality protein, good quality fats, and keeping your carbohydrates low. But, but that's in, in, in the traditional uh, sense. When I talk about carbohydrates, I do mean um, not all carbohydrates. So I mean those sort of starchy carbs, you know, the, the, the breads and the pastries and the biscuits and the, the cakes and, and um, uh, grains uh, and that sort of carbohydrate. Um, we get loads of carbohydrate from our vegetables. So we want you to eat loads and loads of vegetables of all shapes and colors. And, and, um, that, and your plate uh, should, should really look colorful and, and rich in and all the things that I've discuss, discussed. So when we talk about uh, spacing your meals, what we're really talking about, this is sort of intermittent fasting. So if you have um, a, a last meal, say six, between six and eight in the evening, and you don't eat your next meal until six or eight in the morning, that's a 12 hour fast. So people don't realize we are actually fasting overnight and breakfast, the word, is breaking the fast breakfast so i like to think of breakfast as the first meal of the day rather than breakfast uh, in that um often breakfast conjures up um the the idea of grains doesn't it or cereals so you're having your toast or your cereal and and in effect you're just having a whole load of starchy carbohydrates which really doesn't set your blood sugar off in a very stable way for the rest of the day so you want to have something very protein rich make all your meals very protein rich and full of vegetables and um and good fats and that that's your sort of premise for the food and the idea with the, the exercise is that you do it on an empty tank, on an empty stomach, so that you are, again, re-sensitizing re, uh, your insulin response and um, you're, going to, you're going to get so much internal energy from it. And then you sit quietly and calmly to eat afterwards. And so uh, we've talked about the high intensity intervals. Anybody can do that. You can start really slow and just build up as you go. Endurance exercise as well. We want you to, to walk, um, uh, you know, nice long walk. And actually during the lockdown, I think people have got very good at endurance exercise because, uh, you know, it's a great way to make sure that you get your outside um, uh, fix every day and um, you know getting out into nature having a nice long walk or you might go on a bike ride um, and that sort of thing you want to be doing that as well also um, the, the the rest and digest exercise so, you know, things like yoga and breathing and that calming kind of like wanting to calm down the the stress response because as we know I've explained stress does really uh, suppress your immune system and creates all this inflammation uh, as a consequence and it is part of the stress response to do so. So we want you to burn fat, we want healthy weight loss, keeping that muscle mass high and the hydration high. The more you're hydrated, it's a direct correlation to uh, good fat burning uh, weight loss. So these are, these are the, the rough parameters that i wanted to talk to you about um, but but do really um, uh, work with a practitioner uh, especially for people who um, already have uh, energy uh, compromises uh, like people with me people with uh, you know low low energy you really want to um, work very closely with, with a practitioner to develop a plan specifically for yourself. So I can see, um, uh, hi Jo, uh, she's asked, um, 
every uh, high intensity interview. Uh, okay, so exercise intolerant people. Anybody can train their body. In my view, anybody can. You just need to start very, very slow, and you need to um, to to work with somebody. In my view, uh, to to. So I can't really answer that in in uh, in, in more more than general terms on this video but I'm very happy to to speak with anybody personally so um, going forward um, you ha you can try these things at home you know and um, you know take small steps you know make 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 small changes and over a few weeks you you'll just notice how much better you 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 feel and how much more stable your blood sugar is and eating a little bit of protein at the very start of your meal before you take any other carbohydrate uh, part of your plate in uh, that's another really great way to stabilize your blood sugars so um, I hope that's helpful and please do share and invite other people to join uh, and, and um, learn um, more about how you can be in charge of your health. And uh, I look forward to, to speaking to you tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to be speaking about environmental st stresses. Now, environmental stresses, um, a lot of people are very unaware of, of the the, the the range of environmental stresses that we have all around us and it's a it's very important um, subject to be speaking to you about so I'm really looking forward to um, connecting with you tomorrow um, have a great day another amazing sunshine day here locally so I hope that you're going to start with uh, some of those endurance uh, activities outside today um, and maybe a little start in on you know a couple of couple of uh, sets of 30 seconds short burst with a minute and a half of walking could try that today see how you feel and then sit down and have a nice um, nice meal okay bye for now <laughs>